Suzuki knows more about crossovers than just about any other manufacturer. Here's its smallest one, the Ignis. It's a compact, affordable and very stylishly formed way to make a statement in the city and cruise through the country. Lightweight and compact exterior dimensions combine to make the Ignis ideally suited to town driving, its intended habitat. Right from the get-go you feel confident at the wheel thanks to the commanding driving position and the excellent forward visibility that makes this little Suzuki easy to thread through tiny gaps in the traffic. Move beyond the city limits out onto the open road and the Ignis feels much less in its comfort zone though. Um, but if you can deal with the rather vague steering and the body roll that you get at speed through tight turns, there's enough turn in grip to actually make this car quite fun to punt about if you're in the mood to enjoy it. Some of the credit for this uh, lies with this small, stiff, sophisticated TECT platform that facilitates a feather-like curb weight that can be as little as just 810 kilos. This in turn means that a small, relatively low powered engine is all that's necessary to pump this Ignis along at a decent lick. Uh, the unit in question in all models being a four cylinder, 1.2 litre dual jet petrol unit developing 90 PS. At the top of the range, you can get a version of this power plant featuring Suzuki's SHVS mild hybrid technology. Here, an integrated starter generator works with a tiny lithium ion battery to harvest kinetic energy when you brake and convert it into electrical energy that that can power the engine stop start system and give you a small energy boost when you accelerate. Uh, this setup's priority though is to promote efficiency, which is why that variant improves the quoted running cost figures to 65.7 mpg and 97 grams per kilometer. You have to have the SHVS setup if you want an Ignis fitted with Suzuki's on-demand all-grip four-wheel drive system, which is what we've been trying here. A more popular option for buyers, though, will probably be the AGS semi-automatic gearbox. That's a likely boon for town dwellers. You ever seen a small car quite like this? Nope. We haven't either. The idea is to strike a balance between retro and modern while building in a selection of design cues drawn from Suzuki's brand heritage. Uh, these curious rear C-pillar slits and this unusually shaped rear side window, for example, uh, both reference the company's famous SC100 WizKid model from the 70s. Other influences, well, they're more subtle. Uh, the clamshell bonnet, that comes from the original Vitara. The blacked out A and B pillars, they uh, are inherited from the Swift. And those LED headlights, well, apparently, uh, they were influenced by Johnny Depp's sunglasses. Yes, well, whatever. So, time to take a seat inside. And that's something easy to do because that raised ride height makes it that bit easier to slip into the seat and find well, what? Uh, it's difficult to know what to expect after the eccentricities of the exterior bodywork. Now, perhaps inevitably, there isn't anything quite so weird and wacky on offer in the cabin, but the designers have done their best to carry on the individualistic theme where they could. All good enough, but of course, there's no real disguise in the fact that this cabin has been built down to a budget. To some extent, compensation for some of these shortcomings comes in Suzuki's decision to equip most Ignis models with the advanced smartphone linkage display audio setup that we've already seen in the company's Baleno and Vitara models. Now, this gets you a 7-inch colour infotainment center dash touchscreen. Uh, it's the kind of thing that other city car-shaped models either don't offer or restrict to their priciest derivatives. So, time to take a seat in the rear. This Ignis is actually capable of doing something you might have thought a city car could never do, namely seat two fully-sized adults in the rear in complete comfort behind two equally hefty folk up front. Pushed right back using its full 165 millimetres of travel, this seat base provides for better legroom than you get in some focus-sized family hatchbacks. Last but by no means least, let's take a look in the boot. Now Suzuki seems to specialise in providing around 260 litres of trunk space to its customers. Uh, that being approximately what you get with the Solerio City Car, the Swift Super Mini and here again in this Ignis. What's different in this case though is that if you've gone for a model with that sliding rear bench, you'll have much more flexibility in what you can carry. 
What if you could buy a small, sensible little runabout, but feel the same level of, of emotional involvement with it as you get from the kind of car that you choose to spoil yourself? A sports roadster, perhaps, or a convertible? Well, that is the thinking behind this Ignis. True, finding a bit more cash for an ordinary super mini might certainly get you a small hatch with a smoother quality of ride and a better finished interior, but it wouldn't get you a car guaranteed to make you feel good about yourself. Hard to put a price on that, isn't it?